Hey everybody, my name is Paul Esden Jr., a.k.a. Boy Green. I'm the New York Jets digital reporter for Heavy.com. And welcome, well, quite frankly, everywhere. We're streaming live simultaneously in three different places. The Heavy on Jets Facebook page, like and follow for articles, memes, and live podcasts just like this. Also on the Twitter account, at the Jets underscore zone, and my YouTube channel, of course, YouTube.com. Slash boy green two five. Thank you for showing your support. Every Wednesday, we have a brand new episode of what's called the Jet Zone. This is a podcast that has been on air for the last decade plus. I am Paul Esden Jr. If you know the show already, welcome. If you're new to the program, welcome to the family, baby. We're going to be talking about the latest New York Jets news and nuggets, and for the first time ever, after dark. I'm going to be honest, I love the fact that we're doing this after dark. I've never done this before, this late, but you know what? There's so much going on that I love the fact uh, that we are doing this action. So again, make sure you show your support no matter where you're watching. Again, we're streaming live simultaneously on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Make sure you like the video, comment, uh, feel free to get involved on today's show. Get your participation trophy sitting at home or wherever you're watching or listening to the show. This audio will also be later uploaded, so you could be listening to this on Thursday morning or whenever you listen to your podcast. It is available wherever you listen to your podcast, so feel free to, again, rate, subscribe, like, and all that fun stuff. Again, feel free, uh, make sure that you do it, of course, uh, on YouTube. Like the video, hit subscribe down below, and of course, as always, check out the Boy Green merch, baby. I mean, they're just beautiful. I mean, look, it's a clone. It looks exactly the same. If you're listening, just close your eyes, pick up a seashell by the beach and listen, and you'll hear Boy Green. That's it, Boy Green merch right there as well. Also, guys, wherever you're watching, feel free to get involved in the show. Drop a question, comment, topic, something that's on your mind for the New York Jets, and we'll address it here on the show. We'll at first talk about the headline of today's show, which is two big key pieces. And of course, they both come on the offensive line. Makai Becton uh, reported to mandatory minicamp on Monday. That's the first time he's been at the Jets facility since the 2021 season ended. So that was significant. And on Wednesday, Makai Becton spoke with the media for the very first time. And Robert Sala spoke with the media first. And he did so uh, before practice. So uh, Makai Becton after it. So I want to play a clip from uh, old Robert Sala. We're going to roll the footage in just a second because what you're about to hear from Robert Sala is he is peppered with questions about Makai Becton. And I have to be honest with you, it's not necessarily what Robert Sala is about to say here. And again, you're about to hear the clip. It's not about what he said. It's more so about what he didn't. But with that being said, let's throw it up on the big board. Let's go to the tail of the tape here. We're throwing this on the clip. This is Robert Sala earlier today, and you're going to hear both reporters' questions and Robert Sala's answers. He, The first seven questions of this press conference was all Makai Becton, and it all is contained within a minute and 37 seconds. But we're going to play the full clip for you guys because I want you guys to be the judge of your own responses. I will tell you what I feel, and I'll tell you what a couple of the beat reporters felt. But here is, again, Robert Sala and the media on Wednesday for a minute 37. This was the first minute and 37 of his press conference. So let's go to the tail of the tape. Roll the footage. How, uh, how does Makai look? Looks good. Looks good. He's, he's here, so that's good. Is he in shape? Um, working with the performance stuff and all that stuff, it's it's no different than every other player that's come through here. Uh, whether they're in shape or not, they're going to work with the performance staff just to get a gauge of where they're at, and then from there we'll go. Was he, did he show up at the weight that you wanted him to show up at? I'm not going to get into those details, but he's 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 fine. What so. is the plan for him going forward? Uh, this week it's work with the performance staff, um, and then obviously he's got the next 40 days to continue to work uh, and get himself ready to play football. Do you expect him to be practicing when training camp starts? Yes. As far as I know, is the knee fine at this point? It's structurally okay, and it's just him getting yeah, back into Yeah, it's, it's structurally he's fine. Uh, again, it's just a matter of him getting back into uh, just the, the overall football movements and uh, and which he's progressing into. He looks he looks, he looks good, and he's just got to continue working. Robert, in terms of the grand scheme of things, how important is he to the offensive line and what you want to accomplish here? Uh, well, he, every player is important to every position that we have. The, the NFL, like, there, there's the, the rosters are so small, every player matters. And uh, obviously, we're all aware of the, the talent that he, he possesses, the, the size, the athleticism, the physicality, all of it. And, uh, and he's really smart. So uh, having him on the offensive line to, to, to move people, 
off their spot. So the quarterback, so the running back has running lanes and the quarterback can sit in the pocket and buy a hitch. So, um, so yeah, he's important. And, uh, and if he t if he takes care of his business like we know he can, he's he's he can be transcendent. Well, that's a, a beautiful clip there. That if Makai Becton can stay healthy, he can be transcendent. But again, it is more so about what Robert Sala did not say, which concerns me greatly. Again, I will say this before I even dive in: it's June, people. Okay, it's it's freaking June. But I have to be honest with you. I have to be honest with you. The thing that concerns me about those comments that were just made. Hey, Robert Sala, is Makai Becton uh, in shape? Ah, you know, I, I don't really want to get into that. Okay. Uh, is Makai Becton, uh, okay, was he at the weight uh, that you wanted him to be? I'm not going to get into those details. Okay, great. The details he was able to provide is he believes Makai Becton will be ready for training camp. That's good news. Uh, again, that's coming up in late July. So as uh, Robert Sala kind of said there, you got 40 ish days, six weeks, however you want to slice that up of uh, Makai Becton going to be ready for that point. But here's why I, I saw some jet fans were defending uh, the Makai Becton stuff and some fans were eviscerating him. I'm just going to call it how I see it here. That's what I try to bring to the show. I try to just be brutally honest and my brutal honest take to be frank with you guys is if Makai Becton was in shape, if Makai Becton was at the weight the Jets wanted, don't you think the Jets would scream that from the rooftops? Don't you? Because, and I got to give major credit to our boy Connor Hughes from The Athletic for pointing a lot of these things out on Twitter earlier today. Again, I, I was not able to get to the show till over 11 o'clock at night, so excuse me for being a little bit late to the party here. But like Denzel Mims, wow. Mike LaFleur said he's, quote, in the best shape of his life and the best shape his teammates has ever seen him in. Great. Okay. Zach Wilson, beefy. Wow. Clear difference. Mekhi Becton, mm, sorry, off limits. Can't talk about that. Again, that's the thing that concerns me, quite frankly. If he was in shape, Robert Sarr would say, hell yeah, he's in the best shape I've ever seen. He didn't say that. Was he at the weight you wanted? Yeah. Nailed it. Didn't say that. Again, it was more about what he did not say. That concerns the heck out of me. Again, it's June. And I mentioned this from the get-go, from the top. So all of this is just noise, just chatter. If Makai Becton starts week one and just paves the road against the Baltimore Ravens, then all of us are going to shut up, and it was nothing. Much ado about nothing. However, it's not highly encouraging. It wasn't exactly a ringing endorsement from Robert Sala when he refused to answer the weight stuff, when he refused to say whether he came in at the weight that he wanted, both in shape and weight that they wanted the number at. That, to me, concerns me. But again, if he's just healthy, it's not going to matter at the end of the day. And DJ BNMA, uh, who, by the way, is leaving us, so uh, prayers and thoughts up to DJ, who's uh, not nothing terrible. It's uh, He's going to be getting a new Jets job, so shout out to my boy DJ. But I got to be honest, guys, that concerns me. Um, let's take a quick detour and answer a couple of comments uh, here uh, for people joining us. Again, Boy Green after dark. Matthias says, uh, Simon, Boy Green, what's up? Uh, concerned about the linebackers more than Becton. Wow, you may be the only one, Matthias. Not that you're the only one concerned about the linebackers, that the linebackers concern you more about Becton. Again, I'd like some depth, to be honest with you. you got two starters, Quincy Williams, who's a Jet Sea Pro Bowl potential, and you got C.J. Mosley, who I like a lot and uh, coming off a really good year. And then your third spot is either Hamza Nasserlardine or Jamie and Sherwood at this point. Again, they traded Blake Cash in the offseason. I still can't believe that happened. Did that really happen? Anywho, uh, I would like another guy. Aquan Alexander would be nice. That one I really expect to happen. We'll see. Ultimately, if it does, going to be cheap. At a minimum, you'll be depth, if not that third starter in the 4-3 scheme. But, uh, again, my concern with Becton is, and I answered it in a Monday mailbag, actually, for heavy on Jets. The question was, what's your level of concern with Makai Becton not practicing? Because two things were reported. DJ said that he would be at mandatory minicamp, which obviously he is. So check that one off. That's great. And Rich Samini reported that he will not participate. He did not. He was doing his own thing privately wasn't part of the team activities, which again, did not surprise me. I thought they were going to be overly cautious the same way they were with Carl Lawson coming back from off season surgery. That just made more sense to just play it slow. Why it's mandatory minicamp. Why would they rush him out there and do something silly? Cause again, this doesn't matter. It matters 
in the season. So my level of concern, though, is, again, what Robert saw didn't say. I just thought he was just his status quo. Yeah, he's in great shape. Yeah, awesome. He's uh, Yeah, he, he met the weight. But the, him not saying that and then praising other players made it seem like, well, you weren't praising him for a reason. Again, that's somewhat concerning. Let's go to Vern Vern. Let's go. Boy Green, finally time I can make live. Go figure. 11 o'clock at night. Again, this is kind of a, a doozy. We will see if we do something similar tomorrow. Technically, the Jets are supposed to have three days of mandatory minicamp. And what they're actually going to do is they did two days of mandatory minicamp the past two days. And this third day is going to be like a team building activity. Like tonight, for all the Jet fans who were able to make it, I was invited. Unfortunately, I could not make it uh, to One Jets Drive, the debut of their new uh, Take Flight Docu series for the season, dropping five episodes. Which, depending on when you're listening to the show, they drop on Thursday, the the sixteenth. But for the fans that showed up to the special premiere, which again I was invited to, I really wanted to go. Would have been cool. There's Jet legends there: Tony Richardson, Wayne Corbett, Jericho Cotchery. Which, by the way, I love the Jets. They have done a horrible job of this over the you know, the 21st century, Woody Johnson's ownership, whatever you want to say, of welcoming their legends back into the fold and making them feel a part of whatever's going on. The Jets have done a terrible job, specifically over the last, like, decade. Like, for instance, just a random one, Mark Sanchez, the first time that he's been at the team facility since he retired was, like, two weeks ago. Like, Mark Sanchez, while he was only here for four years, believe it or not, five years if you count the injured year, like, Come on, welcome your guys back. Mark Sanchez, Nick Mangle, Brick, Revis, uh, so many others. Uh, so it's cool to see uh, Jayco and others there. That's awesome. And uh, so those guys are all there tonight for the premiere for the show. And that's amazing and awesome and and everything else. So it's uh, it was really cool uh, to see all that. So I wanted to be there, but unfortunately I couldn't. Uh, stuff at the radio station just got back. I literally got back like, I don't know, 30 minutes ago or something. That I jumped on live, so... Uh, love it, but I'm glad you were able to make it, Vern. Vern, awesome. Uh, no one's at the weight they want to be at this point. Brees and Zach said they want to drop a bit. That's true, and uh, I did not get to listen to the Brees or Zach interviews yet. Unfortunately, I've only got to see highlights. But Zach wanted to build his up and then drop, so less on Zach. And then Brees is a rookie, but again, Makai obviously is in kind of a different field. Uh, from that perspective with the weight stuff. And again, he could shut everybody up uh, by just, you know, handling his business and be quote unquote, this transcendent talent uh, that Robert Sala said earlier. Uh, Matthias Simon. Yes, they should make our old vets park uh, part of the team. Agree. Uh, they should uh, quite frankly, um, all of them, they should make them all a part of the team. Why would you not be inclusive um, to people that bled sweat, and everything else for your organization, you should pay that back tenfold and make them ambassadors for the Jets to speak highly of the Jets to come back and be incorporated into the machine. Uh, I just believe that uh, as a bare bone foundational piece. Uh, Ragna Jet, let's see. Let us hope Makai has an internal chip on the shoulder. We can't really see that he comes back to prove himself to himself in the NFL. I, I don't need to see the internal chip, Ragna. I, I mean, we're seeing the external chip. If you saw him today, spoke to the media for the first time since the season ended. And he was, of course, wearing the big bus shirt and around it said fat, lazy, out of shape, injury prone and all these things. And he's embracing the chip on the shoulder. Now, that's rubbed some Jet fans the wrong way. Some people tell him, hey, man, you should just keep it on the inside. Don't let the outside know that they're bothering you, because if you do, you're opening it to me. I don't tell another man what to do in that respect. Like, Mekhi, if that's how Makai drives himself and he he needs a thing like Tom Brady, right, the 199th overall pick, like, he used that for as long as it was. And after he won a bunch of Super Bowls, he said, people think I'm old and they doubt me. Whatever. You know, whatever drives you, man. I, I, you know, you're the one who has to get up in the morning, not me. So, hey, whatever drives you works for me, and that gets it done. So there is an external chip. That is obvious. Everyone can see it. Now, what will it mean? He says that he wants to make all the doubters eat their words. Uh, a, lot, a lot of great wordplay there. Eat. So the fat joke, and then also words, because writers write words, so eat their own words. That was a a, a very nice, um, so it was a very nice one. And uh, to me, I kind of liked it, to be honest with you. I like the external chip. I know some of it bothers some people. Again, as I just mentioned, that you know some people wear the shirt, and then they're like, ah, come on, man, handle your own business in your own way. I don't care. You, you can, whatever drives you, 
uh, to answer that other question, and I'm seeing it as well. So, Matthias, did the shirt bother you? Not at all. I don't care. I know it bothers some people. I saw it on social media and social media streets and saying, hey, don't let that stuff to me, and especially if you could sell it on a T-shirt. I mean, phenomenal, phenomenal branding as a guy that also tries to sell T-shirts and, and boy green stuff all over the place. I can only respect it. Uh, Vern Vern, he needs to sell the big bus t-shirt. I'm sure he does actually. I, I don't have his website in front of me, but it's like MakaiBecton.com. He has his own merch. I, I'd be surprised if he didn't. I don't know that a hundred percent for sure, but I, I would imagine uh, he's certainly uh, selling that shirt and he should. Uh, also, Robert, I was asked in that big blob of answers, like how important is he to the team? And obviously maybe it's not so obvious, but I, I, to me, it's obvious. I, I mean, he is such a pivot point for this team, his health determines quite a ripple effect because quite frankly, at this point, the Jets do not have a proven veteran offensive tackle on the bench to step in. If an injury were to happen, there is no Morgan Moses on this team. Um, I hope that is ultimately Riley reef, the veteran offensive tackle they brought in for a visit. He has both left and right tackle versatility. He would be really nice uh, to add to the full, but that's kind of a TBD uh, at this point. So uh, I'm looking forward um, to seeing if they do add another body because there's a couple of positions linebackers brought up earlier, linebacker, defensive tackle and offensive tackle, are really the key positions at this point, you could squint for safety. You could squint for wide receiver, but probably at this point, those are the big ones and offensive tackles. Number one, you need, you need to break. You need to just protect Zach Wilson, obviously. And the next one on that list is close, but I'm probably linebacker than defensive tackle last. Can the jets believe, whether they believe versus we believe they can stop the run with all the other pieces they brought to the table. That will be tested, obviously, uh, in week one. So we will see if that is indeed uh, the case. Uh, let's go uh, to Jennifer, who joins us. Jennifer, what's up? Welcome to the show on YouTube. Uh, Jennifer um, uh, Mackay has to go against Michael Clements. That should be a challenge. Michael Clements is a freak of nature. So uh, that should only help. And Carl Lawson, again, the whole group. Again, iron sharpens iron. I know Connor Hughes hates that, but like, you know, Michael Clemens, Jacob Martin, Carl Lawson, Jermaine Johnson, they should all really help each other uh, from that point. Uh, Vern Vern, why isn't big, big tickets full press on YouTube yet? How do I find it in full? It should be the Jets YouTube. Uh, Jets YouTube channel normally has it up, but sometimes they are really weirdly lackadaisical with uploading uh, the full pressers. Um, so. Yeah, it's kind of hit and miss. So you just gotta gotta keep keep hitting the refresh button. I have subs, so when they post stuff, I get a little notification on YouTube. But uh, it should be on there. I've not seen the full thing yet. That's also a clippy thing. Uh, but I, I will absorb all of that because this is the last kind of bit. And then we have six weeks of emptiness. There's going to be a nice Jets one drive. That's going to be really awesome to watch. And then I'm going to catch up on all these uh, press conferences coming up here. Uh, I got uh, I got radio show tomorrow, afternoon baseball, and then some Jets interviews. So uh, I'll work it in there. Uh, Matthias, I'm very concerned about the linebackers. What say you? Again, I'm fine. It's kind of the same thing with offensive tackle in a way that I love the starters on paper. Healthy, right? Mackay back to George Fant. Solid. Linebacker, Quincy Williams, I think he's going to be really good. And I know a lot of people question the coverage, but I think with a full offseason and dedicating himself, and he's a, he's a hard worker and 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 speed, 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 he's so good. Um, I think they're going to be fine. Now, again, that third linebacker spot with Nickel and how uh, you know defenses line up, that third linebacker isn't on the field as much as you would think. So from a starter perspective, it's kind of hidden not having that third proven guy, which again right now would be Hamsa or Jamian. So I'm not overly concerned, but obviously one injury and then completely you kind of change the perspective uh, from that standpoint. So that's another reason why you should re-insure depth. Now, Quan Alexander, the guy that they're kind of kicking the tires on. I know the guy they kicked the tires on last year was Ruben Foster uh, for that matter. Um, so just got to keep an eye on there. It seems like from a medical situation, although Ruben Foster actually was training down with uh, Carl Lawson and a couple Larry Ogunjobi and a couple others down with Sharif Taba down in Florida. So Ruben Foster works with all those guys. Maybe something can evolve from that standpoint, but I haven't really seen any update from that perspective. The latest one's been Quan Alexander. He's been a bag of injuries, unfortunately, uh, throughout his entire career outside of rare opportunities. But he'd be a guy I, I think could come in. Dirt cheap. He likes Salah. Salah loves him. So uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, Gilbert Farmer on uh, YouTube. I feel sorry that Makai is being unjustly scrutinized and attacked. Give the guy a break. I hope he proves all the naysayers wrong. 
Gilbert, I'll be honest, and Mackay kind of talked about this in his pressure a little bit from the clips. Again, I have to see uh, the full thing tomorrow. But uh, Mackay does not know why he's getting kind of lit up like a Christmas tree as opposed to another player. Because if you think about it, uh, so his rookie year, he does not play the full shish kebab because of injuries. And second year, he plays like 40 snaps and he's out for the year. So I don't know if unjustly scrutinized. Now, again, I don't care about some of the stuff that people complain about the video games. I don't give a flying hoot what he's doing on his own time. I don't care. Like, enjoy video. I play video games. If people could say, mm, Paul, your content's not as good. You spend too much time on video games. Not that I spend a lot with a baby and all these different jobs, but you get the point that, like, I don't care. But, like, the things that I do care about is staying healthy. He has not stayed healthy, and a lot of people have pointed. The reason why he hasn't stayed healthy is because of the weight thing. And if the weight thing is an issue, then mm, that's the point. So some of it is unjust in terms of the scrutinization. But I would say, I don't think all of it is. Give the guy a break. Again, I, I'm just kind of addressing the facts of the matter that exist out there. I do hope he stays healthy. I, I think, I'm not rooting. There are some people, it seems like, whether fans or what have you, they're rooting for him to fail. And to me, that's stupid. Like, you need to root for guys to have success. He's got the size, Hall of Fame traits, all these things. And I hope he could stay healthy, because again, it would make a tremendous difference uh, to this season, Gilbert. Jets NY 102. Uh, good content, Paul. Keep up the good work. Uh, thank you so much. And guys, if you're wondering what this funny, different colored uh, comment coming in here, that's called a super chat. And if you'd like to support the channel, you could do so. It's available on YouTube for anyone who's watching live. It's down there right by the comment. You could feel free to send a monetary tip. You guarantee that your comment gets answered or question. Again, I try to answer them all anyway, but any support for the channel helps. We just got a lot of new equipment that's uh, bumped up, obviously, the quality. And also, I have to tell you, I can't tell you the full results, people, but this is why you need to like the video. This is why you need to subscribe. And this is why you need to hit that bell notification. I just got confirmation on my phone. We are going to have one of the greatest guests I've ever had on my show. And I'm willing to say greatest. Now, I haven't recorded this interview yet, so I don't know how it's going to go. But I'm going to tell you, it's unbelievable the new number I now have in my phone from the guests that we're going to have on the show. And people, I'm just telling you, this may be the coolest guest, a guy that does not do interviews a lot. He is a retired Jets player, and uh, he's a guy... That's going to be coming on the show. No more hints, no more tips, no more tricks. And even if you say it in the comments, I'm not going to tell if you're, you're I'm not going to tell you if you're right. But I was giddy. I was like when I came home because, like I said, we started this live stream like right around eleven. I came home about ten forty five from the radio station. I ran into the room like a little giddy schoolgirl, and I was telling my fiance, "Oh my gosh, can you believe who I'm going to have on the show?" And she's like, "Who the hell is that?" I'm like, "It doesn't matter. This is going to be the greatest guest ever." So, guys. It's coming. It's coming soon. Uh, we have the we have the date booked, so it should be next week. Fingers crossed, baby, for one of the coolest guests ever. That's why, again, you subscribe and you uh, hit the bell notification. And by the way, huge shout out uh, to all you guys who support the channel. We're approaching rapidly 2K subscribers on the channel. And it's funny, and I love all you guys. I love seeing the regulars in here, and I'm, I'm going to jump into some of the other ones that are jumping in here uh, in a while. But I did a video this morning, and it's it's popping. It's doing some great work on YouTube, and I try to do it. There's three different ways that I do videos on this YouTube channel. Again, for those who are old or new alike, do three different ways. One, the live streams that we're doing right now, which are super fun, engaging. I love talking to you guys, the fans. It's direct. It's a direct line. We get to chit-chat and have fun. Number two, the interviews, which I just teased. Uh, there's a... Uh, there's some uh, great interviews. We've had Tyler Conklin. You guys can go check that one out if you haven't seen it. We just talked to Tyler Conklin like a week ago. Uh, Connor Hughes, uh, Damian Woody, we, and the entire draft season was terrific. The best draft season we've ever had. So superstar guests, number two. Number three is pre-recorded videos. It's basically like an article in video form. It's like a nice five to ten minute rant on something that's happening. and just kind of giving you my take. The one that dropped this morning was Lawrence Cager turning heads at practice, and he's turning heads, and he looks like a monster out there and all these things. But one of you crazy people, okay, one of our crazy fans on here, by the way, said, notice that, for those who don't know, I'm this crazy, high, energetic, crazy guy, okay? So I scream into the microphone, do all kinds of crazy crap. But subconsciously, because I know I have a baby now, who, by the way, is five months and ten days, 
Uh, so she's growing like a weed. I cannot believe it's been five months, by the way. But this baby's been growing and everything, and I got to be quiet. You know, I'm this loud, abrasive person, and I got to kind of rein it in when I'm doing these interviews because she could be sleeping at any time, like now, at night, or in the morning. Like, I, I, apparently, I'm terrible timing with these shows. Anywho, someone notices. They said, I love enthusiastic Paul, but also quiet for the baby. So shout out to – I didn't even talk about it on the show, but that you just instinctively knew – that's why Paul was talking in that voice. Shout out to you. I think that was Beth uh, on the channel. So uh, shout out to you, Beth. Thanks for noticing that. That was pretty cool. Uh, let's go back to Jennifer here. A great And thank you, Jets NY 102, by the way, for the support for the channel. Every little bit helps. Thank you so much. Again, that makes a tremendous difference for all of us. Uh, Jennifer, I think JD is walking, uh, waiting for after training camp cuts to make signings. That's possible. I actually anticipate it a little sooner than that. There are two different versions of the signings, like guys like Quan Alexander, Larry Ogunjobi, and Riley Reef. Those are going to happen either in the next like two weeks or like two weeks before training camp, which the official training camp dates aren't out yet, but it's going to be around July 27th ish rookies report the extra week early and then the veterans. So somewhere around there is when they're going to bring everybody in again. There's no rush for these players. They're just spending time with their families. There's no rush from that standpoint, but there will be additional cuts after that because we're back to the formula of it going from 90 to like 85 to 80 to 75 to 53. The NFL took a slight break from that where it was just 90 and they allowed the teams to cut it to 53 in any way in shape and form. So we had kind of this ritual bloodletting where it'd be 90 players and then it went to 53 like in a week and like, geez, a loo, like 40 people essentially losing their jobs times 32. I mean, do the math. There's like right now about 2,800 players and change in the NFL and that number is going to be slashed in half which is kind of crazy to think about. So there's going to be a layer of cuts, but I agree with you, Jennifer, uh, that that is going to come from that standpoint. Let me make sure I don't have a drink by me, but uh, <clears throat> crew, welcome to the show, baby. Dark soldier in the building. What's popping, baby? Welcome to the program. Uh, let's see. We got a uh, Vern Vern in the building. Becton going to want to be here after all the harassment when his contract is up. That's looking a little forward. I mean, uh, who knows? But what is he? One, two, entering year three. So he's got three, four, five. He's still got three years left. So uh, I'm not worried about any of that yet. Uh, Vern Vern, Thomas Jones. I actually interviewed Thomas Jones. He's a wonderful person. I've only interviewed him once. Technically, I interviewed him three times. I worked at ESPN Radio at the time. That was one of my first big guests I've ever had. Um, and it was supposed to be like a 10-minute interview. Like, because I thought, oh, Thomas Jones Superstar. It was after he retired, but Thomas Jones Superstar, he's not going to spend any time with old little old Paul, which again, I wasn't verified, didn't have a bunch of followers. Like I had no one. And Thomas Jones did a hour-long interview, and it was in three parts because there were some sort of technical difficulties on his end that kept happening. I said, Oh man, uh, he's not going to do it. And he kept calling back to do the interview. So Thomas Jones, one of the great people. A uh, good follower on Twitter. He is, uh, he's amazing. So I've done that interview before. No, it's not Thomas Jones. Uh, Mo Lewis, that'd be a good one, Gilbert. I'll be honest. I have not, I, I do not have any direct correlation to Mo, but obviously a uh, future Ring of Honor member, he should be. Uh, Curtis Martin. Hmm. Could it be Curtis Martin? One of my favorite Jets of all time. Possible, possible. Uh, Vinny Testaverde, which by the way, I just did an article uh, for Heavy on Jets, it's up there for also the people that are watching uh, on the Heavy on Jets Facebook page. I did an article because Dan Orlovsky will probably not play the clip on this show. Maybe we'll do another uh, video about it tomorrow or the next day. But basically, Dan Orlovsky hopped on Sports Center and said Zach Wilson is going to blow up this year. He's going to have 30 plus touchdowns, 10 or fewer interceptions, and, pro and approach 4,000 yards. Which, by the way, for those who don't know, that would be a historic Jet season. For any quarterback, let alone a second-year quarterback, only one quarterback's ever thrown for over 4,000 yards. That was Joe Namath, who did it in a 14-game season. Only one quarterback's ever thrown for 30 or more passing touchdowns, and that was Vinny, or excuse me, not Vinny. It was Ryan Fitzpatrick. Vinny Testaverde got close, so I forgot about that season in 98, how good the numbers were. Like 29 touchdowns off the top of my head, seven picks. He had about 3,200 yards. Again, the yards wasn't what they used to be, but whoa. So uh, Vinny, he is a guy that does not do interviews. So he's another guy, um, perhaps, could be, could be, could be. Um, let's go to Ragna Jet here. Having this D-line and pass rush is going to boost the linebackers. It'll be different, much better this year without 
Quan, but hopefully we get him still. That's also another good point, Ragna. That again, I th- and it, this is also part of the run defense as well that the Jets are betting on. Obviously, is that with the better defensive line play, the linebackers will be, will be able to flow a little bit better. Still, it's going to be a challenge in the mano e mano situations, like tight end linebacker one on one or in coverage. Because again, Quincy's fast, but he's kind of he gets a little too aggressive, so he over pursues. But something he said he's working on is kind of you know, not going 110 miles an hour all the time, but being situational with it, which is smart. And CJ obviously is older, so, you know, he's not great in coverage. Uh, But I think the rest of defense should help kind of all those pieces kind of, you know, go together. But that's true. That should help with the linebackers. Uh, Dark Soldier says Revis. Hmm. Could be. You guys are going to have to tune in. Like I said, I have, I believe that interview is scheduled for Monday. It'll be pre-recorded. It won't be live because uh, I always want to make sure things go right. You know, I, I see a lot of other people like Green Bean did that uh, huge special with um, Mike Westoff. And I've seen other people do the lives with the with the people. I've done those before and sometimes technical difficulties happen and then it's a whole kaput. If you do it behind the scenes, you can kind of make sure things kind of work out better, less happen. So we will pre-record it and then I will immediately post it to YouTube. So you guys will see it. So Revis could be, could be. Revis is a follower of mine on Twitter. That's a really proud follow I have. So it could be. Uh, Gilbert Weeb Eubank. I believe he's dead, but uh, yeah, I mean, Weeb uh, would certainly be a good one. So uh, I like that. Rob Power, Stephen Hill. You know, what's funny. I uh, So for my job, Heavy on Jets, we have a relationship with Getty Images. So for articles, we have to kind of pick our own photo that you're going to see on social media, right? So I was looking for an old photo for one of my articles because I kind of wanted to hide something. And I accidentally ran into Stephen Hill doing an autograph session, you know, in the like, I, I don't know what year it could have been, 2015, 2016 or something. And he was doing these autographs. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, Stephen Hill. And I'm trying to remember the receivers went after that. I know Alshon Jeffrey was one. And there was like another like superstar. I know that they missed, but like, wow, Stephen Hill, Georgia Tech, how are you supposed to be good? And actually he had the pop, right? Did, didn't Buffalo, he had like two touchdowns and the one bomb or something, but uh oh boy, just didn't do it. Just didn't do it. So uh, no, but Stephen Hill, uh, like, what is he up to? Like, I'm, I'm not even kidding. Like, I'm sure the guy, the guy's name I'm about to say, would never do the interview because he's like up yours, not to me, just like to the greater sense. Vernon Golston, like, what is he doing nowadays? Is anyone curious? I'm kind of curious. Like, man, what is this guy doing? Like, what is he doing with his life? Like, I, I, I don't think he's on social media, so I'd just be kind of curious to see. You know, I, I still have his jersey. I I bought that as soon as he was drafted. I bought the five six Vernon Golston jersey. I, I had visions of Lawrence Taylor. Thought the jersey was badass. Also. I believe Terry Tate, office linebacker. I remember that Super Bowl commercial. I remember him being 5'6 with a Reebok jersey. That was pretty cool. So I'd be kind of curious to see what he's up to. But he'd probably go, like, up yours. Like, I'm not doing a Jets interview for obvious reasons. But uh, that would be really cool. Uh, Ragna Jet, no, guys, none of those guys. Obviously, the coolest guest Paul got is huge Jets fan Adam Sandler. Now, that would be cool. By the way, I saw Adam Sandler's move, new movie, Hustle. Highly recommend. I know there's a Jet show, but highly recommend. I know it's NBA stuff, but uh, wow, good. Ever since he's done the net, I love funny goofball dad joke Adam Sandler, too, like uh, Grown Ups and things like that and all of those movies. Like I, I'm a big Adam Sandler fan. But in the Netflix special of Uncut Gems and now Hustle, like Adam Sandler showing some depth as an actor, which I really like. So uh, could be as well. So could be, could be, uh, could get, uh, got to get Adam Sandler. But watch a movie, guys, if you hadn't. Hustle is really good. Uh, Gilbert Farmer, is it true that your dad's name is Paul too? Yes, Paul Esden Jr. is uh, correlated to Paul Esden Sr. He is a diehard Dallas Cowboys fan, though, so I did not get my Jets fandom from him. And if I have a son, I had a daughter. Well, there you are. If I do have a son, if I have another kid and it's a son, it will be PE3, Paul Esden III. I I, uh, determined that a long time ago. Uh, let's see. Uh, Vern Vern sounds like Richie Anderson and Sean Green. Sean Green's another one that I've not heard from in a while, and he's a guy that it would be interesting. I don't know how interesting of an interview he is. I don't. I can't remember back to the Jets media days. Um, but uh, that'd be interesting. 
Let's talk about Zach and Jeff Smith. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, that is another star of OTAs. Let's get into that. Jeff Smith has been fantastic. He's ahead of Denzel Mims on the depth chart. I know it's going to anger the Denzel Mims stands in our audience, but uh, Jeff Smith has been special. And to be honest, he checks off a lot of boxes for the Jets. Obviously, he's a special teams ace. He caught the big, uh, sexy touchdown ball down the field. Um from Zach Wilson. So there's a little bit of a connection there. And I know we joke that, wow, we never want to see Jeff Smith in the game. And rarely we do outside of the injuries, but uh, Jeff Smith is a special teams guy, a former quarterback, a BC guy, if I do remember. So there's a lot there. The jets love him. Special teams guy. Again, it's going to be, and okay. So the jets are four deep at wide receiver. You have Corey Davis, you have Elijah Moore, you have Garrett Wilson, and uh, you have, oh, my God. So Corey Davis, Elijah Moore, Garrett Wilson, and, um, oh, my God, I'm, I'm blanking on our fourth receiver because we have so many for once. But either way, so we're, we're four, Braxton Berrios. That's the other one. So we're four deep at wide receiver. And then who's five? Uh, again, Jeff Smith, Denzel Mims. So your wide receiving core is super tight. There's not a lot of wiggle room there. Maybe you keep six. So Jeff Smith, Denzel Mims, and then we'll see whatever else happens kind of with the rest of the group. But um, he, he seems to be in a very good position. He seems to be in a really good position potentially um, to kind of make the roster. So he's looking fantastic. And again, I, I'm not surprised at all. Uh, by uh, his pop. So he, he's a very, very interesting dude. And again, he's been popping. Uh, Connor Hughes called him the clear star of like the off season. There was nine weeks of voluntary OTAs plus the uh, two days of practice. Um, Vern, Vern Golson drives the beer delivery truck. Cool. Uh, again, I'm not even kidding. I think I may, uh, I may uh, bring him on the show in the future. Uh, Ragnar Jet, so cool. Elijah today said it's going to be almost impossible for any team to guard all three of them, referring to himself, Corey and Garrett. And he's right, by the way. I mean, and to have a dynamic wide receiver room is something the Jets have not had in a long time. I mean, the last great, so 2015 obviously jumps to mind. You have uh, Eric Decker, Brandon Marshall. That combination was the best in Jets history in terms of production. And then go back to flight crew. Remember Braylon Edwards, Antonio Holmes, uh, Jericho Cotri. So you have that triplets. Um, so, yeah, and then go back to the early 2000s. I, I'm reading Mike Westoff's book right now. And uh, he talked about uh, Santana Moss, Wayne Corbett, and Lavernius Coles. Now talk about that threesome. So, uh, yeah, they've had a couple good ones, but none uh, lately. So that should uh, be a nice pop. Uh, Braden, isn't there room for Mims and Smith to make the 53? There certainly is. And Braden, you were the one, by the way, who called that out earlier. So I always remember the logo. So Braden uh, was the one who called it out earlier for my quiet voice, but enthusiastic quiet voice for the baby. Again, I am a father, baby. You gotta do what you gotta do. There's room for both, but do, do both stay? Is that the two? Is Mims traded? Is all the hype up just to be traded? Is it real? Like, I don't know. He's made some acrobatic plays as well, which is really exciting, but a lot to be determined there. Um, Raw Power. Looking forward to Becton having a great year, but this new Twitter bus name t-shirt is a little immature in my opinion. Just go out and perform to silence the critics. Again, Raw, we kind of brought it up earlier, is that a lot of people have your take. They're, it's kind of split among uh, Jet fans. Half of them say, come on, man. Like, by showing the world that it bothers you, obviously enough to make a t-shirt and change your Twitter name and everything, like, you're you're letting the hate in. You're, like, letting it bother you and openly. And other people say, like me, again, I don't care. I'm like, hey, man, if that's what drives you, if that puts a chip on your shoulder, I don't give a flying who. You can call yourself Big Nancy Boy as your Twitter handle. If, if you play on Sundays, I don't care what you call yourself. It's just about showing up. So, But I respect your take, Raw. A couple of people feel that way about the immaturity uh, from that standpoint. Uh, we finally have a receiver room, Ragna Jet. Yes, we sure do. It certainly appears that way. Uh, Gilbert. Uh, Elijah's a superstar in the making, Paul. You heard it here first. I would love to see it. Again, the injuries were a little concerning. Um, you have the quad injury that ruled him out. He never played the preseason last year. And then I don't think it was the same quad, but another quad injury that knocked him out for like the last six games. So he needs to stay healthy, but obviously he's got flashes of brilliance. Before we go any further, and again, I love all the comments. Again, guys, another way to do it, make sure that you like the video. Get on YouTube, hit subscribe. We're getting closer and closer to 2K. The last time I checked, we're at like 1.9 and chain. So uh, the more, the merrier, baby. So make sure you tell a friend and show the support. Also, if you'd like to jump on the show today, you can uh, do a super chat. 
and you can send a monetary tip, skip the line, guarantee that your comment gets answered. I try to get to all of them, but just in case you support the channel, which uh, helps me put bacon on the table for the family and also uh, shows your support for the channel as well, which is radical. But before we get to that, I want to make sure we get to the other topic, which was headlined on this YouTube video, and we'll get to more questions because this is an interactive show. I'm a show of the people. But George Fant, for those who missed it, uh, George Fant uh, tweeted out that uh, – so here's the whole story, I guess. So Minka Fitzpatrick gets paid today. Adam Schefter, Ian Rapport, everyone is on it. He's the new highest paid safety in football, 18-plus million per year on a new deal. George Fant comments under the NFL's official – post about it and says quote must be nice now folks let's uh, kind of uh, call a spade a spade here and just kind of dig through this entire situation here obviously george fan is not happy with how the contract negotiations are going going with him and the jets let's kind of put the full thing here tony pauline and hold the phone i know you guys are tony pauline what an idiot what a loser like hold the phone Okay, Tony Pauline and the Pro Football Network reported that Fant and his representation would speak with the Jets at the NFL Combine. George Fant confirms this in late April, right before the draft. He meets with the media and says, yep, they've had some talks. I want to be a Jet forever, blah, blah, blah. Now, fast forward to now. Obviously, those negotiations have not gone well, but this is not an easy negotiation for George Fant or the Jets for this matter. Here's why. So George Fant is going to be 30 before camp starts. He's 29 right now. He turns 30 like a week before camp. He's entering the last year of his deal for about $11.1 million on the final year of his contract. What do the Jets do? There is a great nucleus out there of Jet fans that say, pay the man. Come on, pay him. Look what he's done. And by the way, what a pleasant surprise. Signed as a free agent in the class of 2020. And us Jet fans wanted Jack Conklin, of course, the Tennessee Titans right tackle. He goes to Cleveland on a big money deal. And a lot of us go, oh, man, and now we got to settle for George Fant. Oh, man, this is going to suck. And, of course, George Fant, by the way, uh, was spectacular. He was really good his first year, really average, which is not an insult. That's good. And then this past year, he had a career year, according to the PFF analytics. So he had a really good year. But there's a couple concerns with George Fan. Just mentioned the age. Again, he's going to turn 30 right before the start of training camp. So if an extension were to happen, it wouldn't kick in until he's 31, which, again, is kind of questionable. Now, the thing, though, is George Fan's 31. Again, he's about to turn 30, but 31 next year. is not the typical NFL 31 because – George Fant started his career as a former basketball player, and he was a jumbo tight end and a swing tackle for the Seattle Seahawks, so he only started situationally. As a matter of fact, he's never started a full season his entire NFL career. That's because of injuries and also being on the bench. But nonetheless, that's a fun fact. So he doesn't have the same tread on the tires that a normal player of his age would have, so that's kind of a benefit to potentially paying George Fant. But the age... He's coming off one good year. Before that, it's not like he was Jonathan Ogden, as Connor Hughes says in his pieces. So he's not the superstar, but he wants to be paid like one. Tony Pauline was reporting that he kind of is looking at numbers around 16, 17, 18 million a year. And that's a lot of money for a guy that, again, is about to be 30. So it's a complicated negotiation. Also, George Fant probably has a lot of leverage because, again, he's versatile. He can play left and right tackle. And also the other guy there is Mekhi Becton. He's like, that guy can't stay healthy, so I'm the only guy. And let's be all honest, there's no proven veteran tackle on the roster. There's not even a proven young guy. Max Mitchell, they hope, can be something. But come on, he was a fourth-round pick for a reason. So there's no legitimate option. If Fant or Becton gets injured, we're looking at Chuma Idoga. Greg Sanat, I mean, Max Mitchell, like, come on, people. That that gives us no confidence whatsoever that any of these relative scrubs, no offense, are going to step in and just be able to do something. So George Fant's got a lot of power by him to say, hey, Jets, you pay me. Guess what? If you don't, who the heck are you going to? I'm your answer, pal. So he's got a lot of leverage. And plus, you want to protect your quarterback, Zach Wilson. So if he holds out or does anything crazy, it does not look like he's going to do any of those things. But we're just talking here openly. George Fan is pissed. He wants to get paid a lot of money. The Jets apparently are hesitant to pay him that kind of money. And it's a complicated negotiation. So I want to make sure we got that on the show as well as you're going through again. Answering all your questions wherever you're watching. Drop in questions, topics, comments. And uh, we'll get them through here the rest of the show as uh, we're officially going from Thursday, or excuse me, Wednesday to Thursday here, where it's, again, Boy Green After Dark, and uh, which has been great, by the way. Again, audio will be later uploaded wherever you listen to your podcast, so feel free to listen to this. This Actually, for those who don't know, 
this podcast was audio only for like a decade. And then we switched over to video uh, semi recently here when we were kind of full court press on YouTube. It's been fun and uh, really interactive uh, with all you guys. All right, let's jump back uh, to the questions. Um, uh, Jets NY102, week one is a must win. We must redeem ourselves from the home opener last year. Cannot let the fans down like that last year. Stadium was electric and then completely deflated. And, of course, uh, you know, what we're talking about probably is the week two home opener, which was New England Patriots where the Jets get rocked. So 100%. I think it is uh, must win is probably aggressive. But to your point, It's a great stepping stone. I'm not scared of the Baltimore Ravens. And really, I'm not scared of any team. But this is a great opportunity because if the Jets win, I mean, talk about statement, win again against one of the AFC's elite, a former MVP at quarterback, Lamar Jackson. They should be fully healthy week one as opposed to last year where they were, I mean, just destroyed by injuries in the secondary, running backs all over the place. But this is a unique animal. This isn't your typical all-star offense they pass all over the ball yard like Lamar Jackson's passing has been sometimes questionable and the running game is elite so the Jets run defense will be tested immediately week one but I would love to see them just punch the Ravens in the mouth and and a surprising win because again they're they are favored and will be favored by time uh, September gets here but I'm excited for a statement win again I'm not afraid of anybody and uh, to me I kind of like the fact that you're compete we're not getting a detroit okay we're getting like a real team and no offense to the detroit fans in our audience but we're just getting a real team that's really good and people think they're good and if you win you're the jet it's almost like i don't want to say a win-win because this is insulting because the jets probably think pretty highly of themselves but like if you lose you're supposed to lose that's what vegas says you win Whoa, you mark your, you kind of plant your flag down. So that is a plant your flag kind of opportunity here. So I really hope so. And again, I want the Jets to be in it. They haven't had a September win. Did I hear this since like September of like 2019? Like, Jesus Christ. I mean, good Lord, people. I mean, for Pete's sake, like, good night. And uh, excuse my Guatemalan, but uh, they got to rein it in, baby. Uh, Vern Vern, he's still a kid. That's how they do things. Hard on their sleeve. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Braden Beckton just turned 22. We should give him all the support we can. Yes, absolutely. Let's uh, throw all the support we can. Uh, that would be great. Um, raw power. Let's see Fant do it again. You know, it's interesting. It's going to be a kind of, well, again, they have the franchise tag always in their back pocket, but what they're doing with Quinn and Williams, it seems like, like prove it. Like, you know, we could pay you early and probably save a few bucks, but prove it. We have a lot of talent around you, and we want you to prove that you could be a dominant player. And if you can, we'll happily pay, we'll happily collect the check at the end of the night. We will see if that's the case for Fant. You know, prove you could be the star, and then they could pay him. So he could be this quote unquote lame duck player, and maybe they hand him an extension. Could be JFM style, right? He looks really good, and they're like, okay, we'll pay him right now, mid season. That could be a factor as well. Uh, Brandon McNeely, where I'm at with Becton is if he doesn't stay healthy this season, I'm out on him. I know he's young, but we need consistent. Yeah. If it's a third year of, of dramatic injuries, like he's not playing 15 of the 17 games. Yes. that would be disappointing. And I mean, I don't know how you can trade a guy. I mean, maybe someone will take a chance because of the trades, but yeah, I mean, they're going all in, which again, the biggest vote of confidence you, you guys can possibly do is what the Jets did. They had every offensive tackle available to them with the number four overall pick, and they decided to not draft any of them. They could have signed a guy in free agency. They did not. So that's the biggest vote of confidence. Action speaks louder than words, and that's certainly what the Jets did by backing their boy, uh, Makai Becton. So I want to see consistency, and hopefully we see that. Hopefully shuts the doubters up. Uh, I'd love to see it. Vern Vern, I suspect fan contract talks to heat up significantly uh, if the staff is sold on Becton. Well, I mean... What changes, though? So, like, okay, that makes sense in theory, but, like, what changes? Like, if they don't believe in him, like, if they believed him in April, which obviously they did, they didn't draft anybody or sign anybody, then they got to still believe in him now unless he did show up so out of shape that they're like, I were done with this guy, which seems unlikely. That seems like a poor use of resources if that was indeed the case because you can't have your quarterback playing behind some either injured guy or something. So uh, we will see. That could be it, uh, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll just see if it heats up naturally speaking. 
Uh, Brandon McNeely, Fant got paid more than he was worth at first when everyone laughed when J.D. paid him. Last year, he outplayed his contract for the first two seasons. Arguably, he was overpaid. He shouldn't be salty. Uh, let's go through a couple of things here. First off, he was wor- he got paid more than he was worth. I'm not sure if I agree with that. Three years, $30 million, $10 million for an offensive tackle per year, and it's not really $10 million because the money was spread out differently? Like, no, I-, I don't think that was crazy money at all, all things considered, to be honest with you. I thought it was really reasonable. Um, but everyone did laugh at him. That's true. Last year, he outplayed his contract. 100% he did. Uh, the first two, so it was a three-year deal, so he's entering his third season now. So uh, he did outplay his contract, but overall, when you look at the first two years, the first year was just solid. It wasn't bad. It was solid. The BFF numbers back it up. Like, he was just average, which, again, is fine. And then year number two, he was above average. He was very good. So to me, I don't know about the salty or this or that. Again, it's just a tough contract negotiation that's not a very simple thing, at least from my perspective, on how that's going to work. So uh, that, uh, that makes things very tough. Uh, night y'all raw power. Thanks for staying up with us again. Boy green after dark, which is cool. I got to make that a new commercial. Uh, let's keep going here. Jets NY one Oh two. We deserve at least a whole season of being in contention, tired of being out of it by the end of October. Even if we miss the playoffs, get us to December. Uh, I agree. I mean, I, I think the Jets are going to make the playoffs, so that'd be cool. But in general, right. Being in contention, not talking about the draft. I love the draft and maybe it's because the Jets have been terrible all the time. So that's part of the reason that I just, Love the draft, but I'm cool not talking about it till the off season when we're eliminated from the playoffs or we win the Super Bowl. Like then let's talk about the draft. Like you're 100 percent right. I want to get back to doing these shows, which again for those who don't know, again new uh, people to the channel, I do shows every week. I'm just going to expand the season. We'll have more details on the schedule uh, coming up, but we're going to have all kinds of shows like this. This episode on a, on one of the days before the game will be behind enemy lines. So I'm going to bring on an expert from whoever the judge playing. So they play the Ravens week one. I'll bring on the guy from like the athletic or something. And we'll, we're going to talk about the X's and O's, but you know, and you're in week eight and you're one in seven, like you obviously, I mean, you can do it, but the fans aren't really going to job. They're like season's over. We don't care. So I want to get back to, I don't know, talk about football on a reads notes, football podcast so i'd love to get back to x's nose wow that play was a difference oh man this play what a great first quarter this uh, i haven't talked football football like that in god knows how many years so uh that would be nice that would be nice um brayden i uh, hope we could get that tackle from the Bengals. what's his name uh, that is riley reef uh former detroit lions first round pick spent four years there four or five years there then spent four years of the vikings solid guy and then the Bengals last year had some injuries but overall he's played i believe i have some of the numbers off the top of my head he's played in at least 12 games every year and he's just a solid guy he's been a starter his entire career so if he was a backup swing tackle here that'd be the first time in his career but it just speaks to the level of expertise he would have i'd really like him um Ragnachet, why are these lamos telling you Orlovsky's comments on Zach's stat potential aren't credible? Dan's credible, I would think. Plus, Jets uh, have the most bets on Super Bowl, which is crazy, but way fun. Yeah, the Jets are second in the NFL in bets to win the Super Bowl, only behind the Buffalo Bills, who are the actual favorite. The Jets are last in that respect. And again, there's that guy. I saw the ESPN segment today. He, someone bet as soon as the books opened, $5,000 the Jets will win the Super Bowl. And I say, well... Again, if he's right, he gets a million dollar payouts. That works out pretty well. So I love the confidence. It's cool. And the Orlovsky thing, like they say, like, wow, you know, um, Orlovsky. And again, we'll have another video out on that. If you don't want to wait for that other video on my YouTube, go to my uh, uh, Boy Green handle on Twitter. The video is there again, at Boy Green 25. Make sure you guys follow me there as well. And uh, the video basically is Dan Orlovsky says to reiterate from earlier that uh, he believes if Zach Wilson improves in a couple areas like uh, his footwork, his ball handles and uh, kind of the, you know, uh, layup throws is that um, he will be a quarterback that throws for 30 plus touchdowns, 10 or fewer interceptions and approaches around 4,000 yards, which, again, are video game numbers and would be historic. But I think people are just kind of crapping on him saying, oh, well, he's a crappy quarterback, so he can't be a good analyst. Like, that's a stupid thing to say. Like, just because someone had a poor career doesn't mean they can't be a good analyst. We've had plenty of really good football players become analysts and then they suck. So, you know, that's not always a direct correlation. But, again, you guys can believe what you want. To me, the offseason is this. We're all full of hope. The Jets are undefeated. They're 0-0. Why not be positive? 
I, I'm cool being negative. I'm cool calling how I see it. I just told you the Mackay Becton situation. So being both a Jets fan and media, again, I'm the uh, digital reporter for Heavy on Jets, like having both hats on, to me, I feel like doesn't, it's not like a conflict of interest to me being a fan. I can see the team better than any just random reporter. Cause I'm a fan. I've got, inv- I've got, you know, skin in the game, a horse in the race, so to speak. So I feel like I could see it better. So to be honest with you, I don't just blow smoke, but we're in the off season. Why shouldn't we have fun and be excited? Dan Orlovsky, like, we complain if the national media isn't giving Jet fans enough love, right? They say, oh, 32nd the power ranking, they're going to suck. And then we complain, oh, man, look what all these national people are saying. And then national people are actually talking us up. Dan Orlovsky, uh, Gerald McCoy was another one. Robert Griffin III was another one. Uh, David Carr was another one. All this offseason that believes in the Jets, 10 wins, playoffs, this, 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 that. And now we're all complaining about it. Like, what a stupid take. Like, ah, oh, crappy. Like, come on, people. Like, get with the friggin' program, man. Like, let's be excited. Let's be revved up. Let's have some chutzpah for Pete's sake. I, I, I think it would just be, it would just make a lot of sense just to kind of buy in. Again, we're in June. Like, let's have some fun for Pete's sake. Uh, Braden McNeely, I thought it was going on fourth season for fan, my mistake, but first season, he was just a swing tackle. I thought he got overpaid a little. For example, we got Moses last season for a steal. Yeah. His first year actually he was a straight up starter. His last two seasons. So again, he signed a three-year deal, 2020, he played 2020, 2021. And now we're heading into 2022, which is his third season. So this past season, again, career year, stepped in left tackle. Awesome. Right tackle first year, solid. The PFF numbers are just, again, I just say, perfectly solid he was perfectly average he wasn't terrible he was just good and that's fine just, just to be solid in the middle of the pack and last year was exceptional again only gave up one sack terrific but the like for instance your moses example was kind of a unique scenario like george Fant got paid in the breath of free agency morgan moses got signed in june so nfl teams had already spent their money it was a one-year kind of flyer deal and again even the secondary moses deal that he turned it into three years for 15 mil five mil a year uh, chump change phenomenal uh the ravens could get a starting tackle at an incredible discount so that works out uh, really well for them as well so again long story short we can agree or disagree on the money. Now, the next money is going to be nowhere near $10 million, I'll tell you that. If he's going to get paid by the Jets or another team, again, the Tony Pauline numbers, if I remember correctly, these ones I'm less certain about because I, I, I didn't just look at this, but I believe from Pauline's reporting that Fant was looking in the $16, $17, 18000000 per year. Again, he just signed a three-year deal a couple years ago for $30 million, $10 million a year. Now we're talking nearly double that. I mean, whew. I'm telling you that money now. Now you want to talk about money going crazy? Like, woo wee, could be, could be. Uh, Jets NY 102. It's been 53 years. Can't say we're not due. <laughs> to quote Angels in the Outfield, it could happen. I've not seen Angels in the Outfield in a long time. I love that movie. I saw that when I was a kid. I, I do love Angels in the Outfield. It could happen again. Why not believe? Drink the Kool Aid, people. Uh, Vernon, Carl Lawson shreds Moses week one. That would like be awesome and sad at the same time. Morgan Moses was an awesome teammate, an awesome player, uh, a real trooper, uh, 96 straight starts. I mean, he was just awesome. Uh, so really cool. It was uh, really cool to see. Uh, it would be really cool, uh, to see, but also sad. Like I, again, uh, you know, the Jets, Ravens, Joe Douglas, there's a lot of connections there, but I, I want to see Carl Lawson a regular season game. It's just kind of crazy. We haven't seen that yet. Uh, Brandon McNeely sounds like fan is trying to say he should get 18 million season with that tweet. Then, yeah, I don't want to go over aggressive because again, he said three words like must be nice. So, I, I don't want to over analyze the situation, but obviously, that is like disgust. It's like, man, obviously, things are not going well, um, are not going well in the negotiations, but maybe it's really that much. I don't know. It was Tony Pauline's reporting. So I don't really know, but I'm sure he wants to get paid handsomely and we will see. I think whether you're talking about the 18 million year, which is what Minka was getting, or that he became the highest paid safety in the league. Like, Hmm, that that's nice. I want to be the highest paid offensive tackle. I have no idea. Again, we're going to have to kind of see there. Uh, Vern Vern, you consider shaving. I am, uh, I am this summer heat is crazy. It, it is hot as balls. Uh, I will say I'm in New York now, which is great. Uh, I've, I, I'm a military brat. My dad was in the Navy for 20 years. So I was very used to moving all over the place and they were mostly Southern places. I lived in, uh, Goose Creek, South Carolina, Somerville, South Carolina, St. Mary's, Georgia, 
to name a few. And I spent different, you know, you know, uh, amounts of time in each of those places. And I did not have obviously the beard that I have here. I've only grown the beard out this long. Let me uh, hide your comment real quick so people can see, you know, I've only had this beard this long twice in my life. The other one was longer, went to like my mid chest. So right now we're hovering. I mean, if I pull it down, I guess it's my mid chest, but kind of stays up here. Um, I am not, especially now that I have the logo, you see the logo on the top uh, right hand corner for those who are watching on YouTube. I feel committed now to the beard. Uh, I'm like, wow. And I get a lot of compliments like, wow, nice beard, man. Like Tyler Conkley did the interview, did the beard game. If I didn't have that beard, that moment wouldn't have happened in history. So you know what? I think I just got to suck it up and just keep the beard. Although I will say it's a little burly. I've not gone to the barber in quite some time. Like I'm getting the Zach Wilson mullet thing going on back there. So I do have to go to a barber. I just haven't cut my hair or touch the beard, but they'll shape it up. They'll clean up this burly lumberjack action, but I will not shave. We got the logo now. I've got no choice. I I'm committed. So we got to see what happens uh, there from that perspective. Well, everybody, uh, that's going to, we're, we're over an hour here. So I'll go through a, a, a couple more. Let me see. I'll go through a couple more comments here that are just coming in. Then we'll wrap up. And now we're officially in Thursday and uh, got to get ready for the radio station tomorrow, but we'll be back on. Uh, I'll answer the last couple questions that are coming in here, but uh, we will be back on. I'll have another pre-recorded video. We'll throw that out there. And like I said, there's a big interview coming. Uh, my last text says it's scheduled for Monday. So fingers crossed. We'll see if that indeed happens. And it would be a major guest, one of the best ones I've ever had. So I hope you guys are subscribed to the channel. If you're not already hit the bell notification. So you don't miss uh, any of these great interviews, great conversations and, I feel like we're all growing together as, as we keep hitting these milestones, 1,000, 1 1.5, and hopefully 2,000 here in the near future, that as we're growing up, all of us are kind of coming up together and we're all supporting this cool uh, jet show that you guys seem to really like. All right, a couple of quick, uh, quick hitters here. Uh, Ragnar, Connor said what he saw from Zach today and yesterday. Gets him excited to see what he does in training camp. Jets going to ball in 2022. Love it. I have to catch up on the Can't Wait podcast. I'll listen to that on the drive into work. And also I have to catch up on the new Badlands episode that drops as well. So I got a lot of catching up to do. Uh, but uh, that sounds amazing. So I'll have to catch up on my boy Connor Hughes. We'll have to have him back on the show here soon. Um, SDA Jets, who's, gonna, who's going to week one? I got I got to tell you. I uh, have not committed to any games yet this season, but I would love to go week one, the home opener. That'd be freaking cool. I got to see. We got to see. I will be going to some training camp, I think, somewhere in whether it's July or August. Uh, a couple years ago, I went to, uh, for my day job, for those who don't know, I'm a sports talk radio host in New York, Syracuse, New York, to be specific. We cover all three teams, um, uh, Bills, Giants, Jets. And a couple years ago, pre-pandemic, we went to all the training camps. We went to we went to the Bills, got behind the scenes, got to talk with the coaches, players, and did interviews on the field. That was awesome. Went to the Giants, same thing. And the Jets, last second of bail. I guess they had too many requests or something, so they had to cut back, which kind of sucks. You'd think the one Jets guy would have a couple of connections to be at the Jets training camp, but apparently not. So uh, I'm going to try to do that because I've never been there behind the scenes. I've been there as a fan. I've never been in there behind the scenes as part of the media. So hopefully I can meet a lot of you guys there whenever that's going to happen. More details whenever we figure out that crap. But in terms of a game, I definitely want to go. Lamar Jackson, Ravens, week one would be so lit, so cool. The place is going to be rocking, so I'll keep you guys posted. I've not made any decisions yet, but that would be cool. We'll see what happens. I, I'm seeing everyone's doing these, like, you know, Jets media days doing a game where – I, as Boy Green, would go with a bunch of our followers. We all watch a game together. So we'll see if we can throw something like that together. If there's enough interest from you guys, we'll try to pick a game. We can all meet up, and that'd be a lot of cool uh, fun. So we'll see if that's uh, going to happen. Got to get the place rocking. Amen. Uh, Vern Vern, I'm in Texas. It's rough bearded, baby. I love that. I love that. Uh, Braden, thanks, Paul. Uh, good night, everybody. So, uh, Brandon, thanks, uh, Boy Green. Good night, everybody. Good job, Boy Green. Appreciate it. Thank you, Vern Vern, for all that. Guys, thank you so much uh, for tuning in. I I've mentioned it several times, but why not another time again? Make sure you show your support wherever you're watching. Heavy on Jets, like the page. Uh, show your love. If you aren't already, you're on Facebook. We have articles, memes, jokes, all kinds of fun stuff. It's a good community of 20,000 plus Jet fans. My YouTube channel, again, is growing. We're trying to get closer and closer to 2,000 subscribers. We're hovering that 1.9 range. And of course, like the podcast, The Jet Zone, which is a weekly podcast, new episodes every Wednesday, even late after dark. Wednesday night. So make sure you guys check it out there as well. And again, the Jet Zone on Twitter, follow the Jet Zone on Facebook, follow and love. And uh, we'll see you guys next time for another video. Thanks for hanging out with me on a late Wednesday night after dark.
Until next time, guys, we'll see you later.